The last reading this evening will be done by the author himself. I believe it would be fair to say that he needs little or no introduction at all. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Neil Giuseppe. <laughs> Errol boy, I couldn't have chosen anybody better to do that piece, boy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this final reading comes from the chapter entitled Popuri. Before I start the reading, however, I want to point out, you know, Facebook is a, an interesting thing. You meet all kinds of people and you develop friendships on Facebook. And there's a gentleman I met through Facebook and we now correspond quite regularly. Uh, on all kinds of things. And there's a question he keeps asking me, and I keep telling him, well, this will tell you. He's here with us tonight. Actually, I've only physically met him in life once. This tonight is the second time. And he's the retired judge, former minister, Herbert Volney, who is here with us this evening. <laughs> but I especially chose this because it's a question he always asks me. So here it is. Over the years, many people have asked me why I never got into politics. My answer has always been the same. I have neither the patience nor the testicular fortitude to be a politician. It is true that politics governs everything in the world, but I have always felt that getting involved in active politics often forces one to make compromises that they would never make in the normal course of things. I am convinced that a politician or a political party can only be successful if they determine from the start that they are quite prepared to serve only one term. Once the question of re-election comes into the picture, the compromises start. Members, however, of a committed one-term party can make the hard decisions that often are needed without fear of losing at the polls on the next occasion that they offer themselves to the population. In Trinidad and Tobago, there are many hard decisions that need to be made that successive governments have seemed afraid or unwilling to make. And that is why we continue to be a third world nation, a place I believe we will always remain, regardless of what the politicians may say to the contrary. And so, as the Calypsonian explainer once sang, not me and the monarchy. <laughs> it is not that the opportunities did not present themselves. As a matter of fact, two former prime ministers, George Chambers and Patrick Manning, both suggested to me that I should seriously consider becoming a candidate at general elections for the constituency of Arima, the town where I was born and nurtured. In both instances, while I indicated that I appreciated the confidence that they obviously had in my ability, I had absolutely no interest whatsoever. Two other persons also tried to get me involved in active politics. The first was Dr. Max Awan, a former Minister of Health in the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Max was a good friend and expressed an interest in setting up a new political party in Trinidad and Tobago to challenge the status quo. I told Max I would not get involved because I believe that the approach he planned to take was totally wrong and would be rejected by the entire population. His planned party never got off the ground. There was only one time that I gave serious consideration to getting involved, and that was in 2002. I was invited one day by my friend Richard Jackman to attend a meeting in Port of Spain with Wendell Motley, a former finance minister in the government of Trinidad and Tobago. I have always had the greatest respect for Wendell Motley. At the meeting, Wendell indicated his intention to launch a new political party, and he outlined his vision for Trinidad and Tobago. I must admit, I was impressed. For the next few months, I worked very closely with Wendell and his team in setting up the party which was to be known as the Citizens' Alliance. We sought to set up a number of linkages with a series of prominent individuals and citizens' organizations. 
Unfortunately, a snap general election was called a, few, a mere few months after our efforts to get the party off the ground had begun. Along with one or two others, I advised Mr. Motley that the time was much too short for us to even think of contesting the election, since none of the party structures were yet in place to allow us to make a serious run at capturing the government or even winning enough seats for us to be able to make a difference in Parliament. My argument was that our goal needed to be long-term and would be better served by taking the next five years to build strong party institutions which will allow us to be a force to be reckoned with down the road. A number of others disagreed, however, and they were able to convince him to proceed. At this point, I wish them luck, I wish him luck, and I withdrew completely from any further involvement in the party, which went on to contest the general election and suffer a heavy defeat, which ended Wendell's involvement in our nation's politics. I was quite disappointed with the turn of events since I remain convinced to this day that Wendell Motley would have made an excellent Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you.